In this segment, we are going to uh, take our definitions of uh, linear momentum and angular momentum, and more particularly their rates, and see how things work out for rigid body motion. Okay, because this will then make a connection with rigid body dynamics, which chances are you've all studied at some point. Okay, so um, remember the setting. We are now considering a motion where if this is the reference configuration, the body is, is undergoing a translation maybe and a rotation, right? And we're going to compose the motion as consisting of that translation and the rotation, all right? Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at um, the rates of linear and angular momentum of rigid bodies. Okay, so here is the picture. We have the body in its reference configuration, omega naught. Uh, we have a position x, and let's suppose that this is the position of the center of mass, right, that we defined uh, perhaps two segments ago, right? Uh, and then the body undergoes a motion, but this is a very special motion um, where you recall that we have phi equals c, function of time only, which is the translation, and we have a rotation, right, q, all right? Um, and then this, this comes into, uh, okay. well, it doesn't look terribly rigid, but assume it really is a rigid motion. Okay, so we have omega sub t, little x, and that is the position of the center of mass. But maybe I should put the center of mass more in the center at the very least. Okay, so let's assume the body is reasonably homogeneous. So we have that as the position of the center of mass. Okay, and recall that we have a rigid motion. Okay, which tells us that uh, phi equals a translation vector plus our orthogonal rotation tensor, which can be a function of time, okay, multiplying x or acting on x. And we have that c of t belongs to R3, making it a vector, and q belongs to SO3. All right, rotations. It's an orthogonal tensor. Okay, now, uh, just let's just remember that C and Q are functions of time. At that time, at, there are uh, instances when I may just want to suppress that dependence just for brevity. Okay, so uh, what we have then is that, that, that the spatial position X, which is phi, is equal to C minus, sorry, plus QX. All right? Now, I want to rewrite this motion uh, using the, the, the idea of the center of mass. All right? And um, the way I can do this is the following. Okay? I can now rewrite this as, um, right, this is now, I want to write this as G plus Q times capital X minus capital G, okay? This is easy enough to do because by comparison, what, what we are seeing here is that um, what these two imply is that C, function of time, is G, function of time, because remember that G here is, a, is the center of mass in the current configuration, which is changing with time, okay? 
uh, minus q function of time g, capital G which is fixed. All right. Once we make that uh, identification, we see that we've essentially rewritten now the motion as the motion of the center of mass. Okay, uh, it is the motion of center of mass, COM for short, and this is so, and that is the translation, right? The translation of the center of mass, and the next term is a rotation. about the reference center of mass. Okay? So what we are saying is that the way we can describe any, any motion is we translate it and then rotate it. Okay? And that's completely equivalent to any other, to, to, to any rigid body motion, right? Every rigid body motion can be decomposed as shown here. Okay? And this is the form that we are going to use. All right. Now, uh, what that lets us do is write this relation, which is x minus g equals the rotation tensor acting on capital X minus g. On the left-hand side, I have the spatial position of every point in the deformed configuration from the spatial position of the center of mass. Okay, and what we are saying is that that is obtained just as the rotation Q applied to the difference in positions in the reference configuration. All right, essentially this this is this is fairly obvious. Really, what it is saying is that if this is the reference configuration, sorry, if this is the current configuration, we look at two points. Okay, and let's suppose that this point is the center of mass. We look at another point. What this is saying is that the <clears throat> vector linking them is just obtained. If you go back to the reference configuration, look at the vector linking those two material points, the center of mass and, and this other point, and then just apply the rotation to it. Right? That gives us the new vector. Completely obvious. Okay? All right. Um, now, I am going to want to write out another relation here linking these two quantities. Okay? Well, not linking each, these two quantities, but, but something that's applied to each of them. Okay? So I'm going to say that let's just note the following. Okay? If we consider integral over omega t rho function of position and time um, acting on, sorry, multiplying x minus g d little v. Okay? This is equal to integral over omega t rho, I'm going to suppress arguments here, minus uh, integral rho dv multiplying g. Okay, because g is the position of the center of mass, which does not depend upon position, which does not depend upon, uh, it's no, no longer a spatially varying quantity, right? g is a function only of time. Okay, so I can pull it out of that integral. Okay, right? But then you observe that the way we defined g originally was in fact as integral over omega t rho x comma t little x d little v divided by integral over omega t rho d little v, right? That's the definition of the center of mass, okay? What, imp what that implies is that this quantity is equal to zero, right? Okay? All right, just from the definition of g. Okay, so that's an important result. Uh, likewise, um, if we do that to the right-hand side, okay, but we do that as an integral over the reference configuration, okay, integral over omega naught, uh, Q, function of time, 
uh, acting on x minus g dv and I need to have a rho inside here as well, right? Okay. If I carry this integral out, what I get is, uh, of course, q comes out because it is a, it depends only upon time, okay? So we have q, here we have integral over omega naught, rho zero, function of reference position, capital X, dv, minus integral over omega naught, rho zero, function of position, d capital V multiplying G. Okay? Close these square brackets. Okay? Again, from the definition of the reference center of mass, From this definition, okay, what we see is that this term also equals the zero vector. Okay, the reason I've written these these results out is that we are going to have to use them uh, a few times in what lies ahead of us. Okay, so let's now uh, move ahead. We're talking about rigid motions. So we know how we can write the spatial velocity, right? Spatial velocity, it's not going to be a function of position, of course. Um, well, it will be a function of position, I'm sorry. Um, it, it's going to be given to us as uh, g dot, right? I'm, I'm, I'm using our expression of the rigid body motion as motion of the center of mass uh, plus a rotation around the center of mass. Okay, okay. So we get g dot plus q dot capital X minus capital G, right? Now we'll use the trick that we used uh, quite a few units ago, which is to write x minus g as q transpose little x minus little g. Okay, and we can do this from our expression of the motion um, that we derived on the previous uh, slide, right? Right on top of this slide, right? We can invert that to write capital X minus capital G on the right-hand side as shown here, right? As Q transpose little x minus little g, okay? Um, right, so we get G dot of time plus Q dot Q transpose acting on X minus G, right? You remember from a few units ago, we call this tensor omega, right? Which we also observed is skew symmetric, right? Omega equals minus omega transpose, right? And we showed why that is the case, okay? What that lets us do is to say that um, we also derived this back then. We said that now the tensor omega acting on x minus g is the same as an axial vector omega hat crossed x minus g, right? And here omega hat is the angular velocity. Okay, and in particular, we made the observation that the tensor omega uh, being skew symmetric can be written as omega, uh, sorry, zero minus omega hat three, omega hat two minus omega hat 1, 0, 0, and we have omega hat 3 minus omega hat 2 
and here we have omega hat 1. Okay, that's the relation between the skew symmetric tensor and that axial vector omega hat, right? We, we'd, we, we'd worked with this before. What this lets us say finally then is that for the velocity, we have the velocity um, depending upon spatial position and time as the velocity of the center of mass plus the, rate, the, 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 the additional velocity that comes from the angular velocity expressed about the center of mass. Okay? So, the velocity of any particle, of, sorry, of any point on the body as it's, as it's undergoing rigid motion is given to us by the velocity at which the center of mass is, transla is translating, right? Plus the effect of the rotation about that center of mass. Okay? Those are what those two terms are. Okay? So I would call this therefore the velocity of center of mass and this is velocity about that center of mass. All right?